Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Fortino, Chief Strategy Officer over here at Netline. If you're like most of our clients, you've spent a considerable amount of time, budget, effort on creating some really amazing content, whether that's a webinar, a white paper, an ebook, a case study, an analyst report. All of that content's been created for the sole purpose of engaging with prospects, ultimately developing dialogue with said prospects, with the final goal of converting that dialogue into business outcomes, i.e. one business. Uh, we've designed a platform specifically focused on helping to empower B2B marketers to make that an extremely efficient process. They can launch a content-centric lead gen campaign in minutes and immediately activate that data via real-time connections into your downstream marketing automation and or sales acceleration platforms. What I'm going to do today is just quickly dive into the product I'll uh, give you a quick tour as to how it all works, and then we'll have you on your way. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, obviously reach out after the session. We'd be happy to do so. So let's dive in. I'm going to make my face a little smaller here, and here we go. So we'll get uh, started by simply clicking on the CTA on the home page, and I'm going to bypass the login, obviously, because I'm already logged in. As a marketer coming into the platform, you're faced really with two choices. Uh, one, do you want to launch a campaign for specific use within your own site? Uh, or would you like to reach beyond your site? Today, we're going to cover the use case of going beyond your site, tapping into net new scale on a completely on-demand basis and driven by marketplace and bid-based pricing. And so for purposes of this, I'm going to click on new lead flow campaign and we will call this product tour. What you will see here is a basic progression of launching a campaign. Uh, typically, once you know what you're doing, you can do this in a few minutes. What, what you'll see here is you can add your company name, your URL, your logo, pretty self-explanatory. Content is ultimately supported uh, on a campaign basis by up, having up to 35 different assets per campaign. So lots of different mixtures that you can use from top of funnel and bottom of funnel, or from, from a format perspective, whether that's a PDF or a video file or live event on a webinar platform, we really don't care. The platform's designed to be content type agnostic. So this is where you'd actually be building dynamically landing pages, a form, and native units that are distributed across our platform at scale, all without ever touching any HTML and all without actually uploading any ad creative, it does it all on the fly. And so what you're seeing here is a title, tagline, abstract or description of the content, language to select. And ultimately, we're going to ask you a couple different questions around the format. And so if it's a file that you need to upload, obviously you'd select upload. You'd pick the type of naming convention behind that content. You can see it's a pretty exhaustive list. Uh, let's say I wanna upload a playbook. I would just simply upload the PDF and be done. It could be a video file or an audio file, so maybe it's a podcast recording. Could be a PowerPoint presentation, whatever, doesn't really matter. At that point, upload a cover art graphic. And what it's doing is it's dynamically building that landing page, a lead gen form focused on data capture, scrubbing, and filtering, and ultimately companion native ad units that are then dynamically distributed across our platform using audience target, which is our content recommendation algorithm. Um, from there though, if it's not a file, you'd go back here and say, let's say we need to point people to a landing page. We can do that here quite easily. You drop in the URL. If it's neither of those, it's not a file or a URL, that's okay too. Uh, let's say it's a live webinar. You'd pick that and you'd be on your way. And we'll show you how you connect into a webinar platform in a moment. I'm gonna X out of this. Next thing is to decide whether you need to ask any custom questions before getting into custom questions, it's really important to understand what Netline does deliver to you by default. There's a ton of data, and we make use of Netline's predictive forms as well. So the forms for, from an end user perspective start off pretty simplistically. We ask very little amount of information. Uh, really, the core goal here is to drive engagement and obviously optimize conversions for you. That said, structured data delivery to you is really important and you'll see why that's important on step four filters. And so every lead that is delivered will have all of this data that you're seeing here. That said, if you need to ask something beyond that, I don't know whether you wanna understand 
the amount of seats specific to a given piece of software or the timeline for a purchase decision or perhaps um, you know pain points organizationally, that's okay. You can sit here and say, I wanna add a drop-down question. You'd write your question here. You'd add as many answer selections as you'd like. You can even reorganize those and drag them around. At that point, you'd hit submit question, you'd be done. Filters is by far and away the most important aspect to consider about using Netline, right? It's not difficult as a marketer to create content and promote it th throughout the web. Vast majorities of platforms are created specifically designed for you to drive traffic to all of that great content goodness that you've created. That said, it's a, it's a somewhat of a risky value proposition, right? You're spending money on delivering users and hoping to convert into qualified leads. Netline approaches that from a fundamentally opposite perspective, whereby we're only charging you for qualified leads that specifically meet the criteria that you've defined here. And so I'm going to simulate a campaign. This may or may not match your needs, but you'll get the idea. Let's say we're targeting professionals within the US and the UK. You'll see pricing here as, long as, as well as a suggested CPL over here, real time, as I'm interacting with this filter criteria. And what you're telling the system is, this is specifically who you would be willing to accept as a real registration from your content as a qualified lead that would be delivered to you. And that is only what Netline can charge you for. And so let's say we're interested in targeting IT professionals and general executives, but perhaps not all IT professionals. We wanna get rid of, I don't know, data center and network security folks. Uh, from there, we want to focus on job level and uh, let's say we just want to target managers and above. Oh. Target all industries. We perhaps don't care for this campaign, but we do care about the company size. We want to target organizations that are of 100 plus employees, let's say. From there, uh, and getting back to my point, this is exactly the filter criteria that will be executed for the campaign. We cannot deliver leads that explicitly do not match the criteria that you've defined here. You're always in control. Going beyond that though, you can execute an ABM content centric campaign too. You'd simply hit yes. You would upload a uh, CSV file containing the domains of the targeted accounts. At that point in this white space here, you'll, you'll receive a real time match rate for the recognized companies and also the companies that weren't recognized. Those companies that weren't recognized typically tend to be typos, things like that, or poorly structured data. I'm gonna turn this off. There are a few other advanced filters too around account suppression or business only email addresses, but we'll leave those alone for the time being. I'm gonna hit next and we will jump forward to scoring. Scoring's completely optional. Uh, scoring's key goal though is pretty self-descriptive, right? It's, it's, um, it's about providing your marketing org any nurture paths and ultimately your sales work with additional insights into the sweet spot of those good leads that we've delivered. And so as we went through on the filter step, we said we were only going to um, receive good leads from the executive functional area within an organization and also within some of the IT functions. That said, your sales team might say, well, yeah, most of those IT roles are good. And that's why we've already said we'll accept them. But anytime someone comes in who's an IT project manager, let's score that person as an A. And you can see this happen across every value that we've selected as a good one. And perhaps same thing applies here at the job level. All of them would be considered a B, but Based upon your own experiences, perhaps VPs tend to have the best engagement and dialogue and purchase intent than any other layer inside the organization. Ultimately, what's happening here is once you set the scoring up, it's going to give you a composite score next to the raw PII that's ultimately, ultimately delivered as part of the campaign. That data can then be leveraged immediately. It can be used for nurture paths. It can be used to accelerate uh, and en enable your sales work. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a one-time thing. You set it up there and you're done. Mapping is completely optional as well. This is only important if we're feeding data real time into third-party systems. This is where you can simply to change the default values of what we are passing so that you're using your own naming conventions. We will skip forward and go to lead terms. 
Lead terms is where you get to see the campaign viability and estimate in terms of lead volume. You can control your budget. You can control the number of leads, the pricing that you even want to pay. And so what you're seeing here is a lead estimate for the amount of potential leads that we can generate. We can come at the campaign structure in two different ways from a budget perspective or the number of leads. I'm going to say I want to target 250 leads. It's going to calculate that suggested CPL and say, okay, total campaign cost is $6,600. It's really important to remember, we can only charge you for the leads that we deliver that explicitly match the criteria of the campaign that you already set up in step four filters. You can even go further though and say that I want to have a monthly lead max of let's say 50 leads per month. So the campaign will dynamically cap each month based upon that number being hit. It'll dynamically reintroduce itself the first of the following month so that you don't have to remember to do that. One interesting element here is the introduction of marketplace bidding. And so by going into CPL override, you can control your own pricing dynamics, just like what you would do on a, I don't know, let's say it's a PPC campaign with Google or a display campaign uh, through programmatic. This is where you get to decide what pricing economics makes sense for you. We are saying that a $26.50 CPL makes sense today based upon current market dynamics, and it's giving you a projection of it being a highly performing campaign with all data points of being in knowledge. That said, we could go in here and say we want to up it to $30 CPL to command greater share of voice. Maybe we've got an exciting product launch happening. Conversely, uh, perhaps your average selling point of your product is relatively low and you can't justify $26 CPL. Perhaps you drop that to 15 and it's going to do another calculation. And it's important here to, to show as well, if it says low, there's really no risk in starting there. Aside from slow lead delivery, you can always escalate that if you'd like. And so getting back to kind of the underlying tenants of the platform, we're all about democratizing lead gen. Make it simple, make it efficient, make it cost effective and really empower a B2B marketer to make those decisions on their own. Going forward though, we'll just drop in the 2650 uh, CPL to get it back into high performing. From there, you can uh, in enable additional features such as duplication, lead enrichment, and so on. Scheduling, super self-explanatory. Start date, end date, that's it. Fulfillment is incredibly important for all B2B marketers. This is how you activate data, right? So every lead that we deliver is always fed real time into the leads tab. You can augment that to receive email companion alerts as well on a daily or weekly basis, cumulative or incremental files each time. You can have them sent to multiple people in the org, but I would imagine you're in the camp that you're gonna need this data real time. And so this is where we go about picking a connector uh, if you don't see it by default on the list, that just means that it's not pre-built for you. You would just select other and then go through an additional step. Let's say though, you're using, um, I don't know, on 24 for your webinar platform and you need the registration data to go there seamlessly. We'll hit on 24. You'll see that the connector is already pre-built. This is an API directly from our system into on 24. That way you're getting all of that good on 24 richness and experience, uh, all the reminder emails, the calendar invites, and all of that to drive attendance for the webinar. But all of that data is coming from our platform as a way for you to extend the footprint of that webinar well beyond just your own inbound and or own um, you know, organizational promotional elements to drive reg for that webinar. If you don't want all of the data that we have, uh, you can suppress that too and say, I want to remove some of these features. You get the idea. Uh, this is where you'd actually add your event ID and your key. From there, a new little link would show and it would say send test leads. At that point, we'd send five test leads over into On24. You'd confirm that they show up and you would hit enable. At that point, the connector's done. You do not need to be a developer to do this. I'm not. I've built hundreds of these. Uh, super simple. You can also though say, well, yeah, we're using on 24 for our, our webinar experience, but I really need that data to go into Salesforce as well. So we have what's called dual tracking of data. And so you can go in here and say, I needed to go into Salesforce, same exact thing. You'll see companion content. Sometimes they're videos, sometimes they're blog posts. Sometimes it's both like what you're seeing here. Everything's set up 
all ready, ready to go to go into Salesforce. If you had custom questions, you'd see those as available options here as well. From there though, uh, we're just gonna jump forward to review. Review is nothing more than our equivalent of uh, a checkout page. And so this is a summary of every single thing that you've done. You will see preview elements of the actual content showing you what it would look like for an end user, ultimately those prospects that you're trying to drive engagement with. You can take a look, make sure it looks good. You've got great graphics, uh, no font typos or anything like that. At that point, hit next, you're live. Uh, the leads start coming in. Uh, obviously, this is all instantaneous, so the campaign will go live very quickly. We are delivering in excess of 700,000 leads to our clients on a monthly basis, so there's a large footprint of distribution and there's a large appetite for users to consume content. As those leads are coming in, they'll be going in dynamically into the leads tab. You'll find your campaign and go look at that data at any time. It'll obviously be going through that connector that we had talked about or the API into any downstream systems as well. And then we're big fans of data visualization here because um, you know we marketers tend to be visual folks and we also need any bit of help or assistance possible to convince others of what we do is actually delivering value. And so if you found your campaign, you can go in here and hit view. And what it will do is it'll visualize the entire data set around the campaign so that you're no longer just thinking of campaign execution as raw data and saying, I ran a campaign, I generated X amount of exposure, I yielded Y amount of leads, and it's just raw personally identifiable, identifiable information. Not all that exciting to share, especially to highlight to management and or your sales peers. And so the first tab here is just a campaign overview, how the campaign's performing and so on. But you can start to get into the details and the nuts and bolts of the campaign around of those good leads that were processed, what's the composite profile of those users? What are the industries, the sub-industries, the revenues and so on? of those professionals. At any time you want to dive into those, and let's say we want to look at these folks that have registered for your content, have met your filter criteria, and work at companies of 25 to $50 million. I can just click on that. I have instantaneous access to the data. Same thing is true for the person side of things. Their job level, their job area, job function, country, state, region, and if you did score them, you would see that here. In this case, it was just a generic score applied. Custom questions, you'd see those answers visualized. If you wanted to really dig in and say like, who are all the people who said yes to this question? Again, instantaneous access. Content summary, pretty self-explanatory. This side is just a visualization of the assets that you're running. This is the type of content. So if you had a bunch, you would see that and it'd be represented in beautiful colors as well. Analysis is a pretty advanced tab that I'm just gonna quickly show you here, but I, I tend not to suggest to use this by default, but it allows you to save custom configurations of data and reports and you can manipulate this as much as you want. It tends to be more of a, um, a triage type report where you're trying to really dig in and analyze data points or observations or hunches that you might have. It tends not to be something that you would um, start here from a prescriptive basis. Leads by date, pretty self-explanatory. The colors represent the pieces of content on that given day that generated qualified leads. Impressions, same idea. Colors represent the piece of content and the footprint for it. So again, getting back to kind of the campaign structure and performance oriented model that we have, we don't charge for traffic and we don't charge for exposure. We charge for qualified leads. And so this impression metric that you're seeing here um, is just for us to articulate our value to you beyond the raw data that you're generating. You can see how the assets are performing against each other. This final column though, to me is always the most incredible one, which is if you're running more than one piece of content, this allows you to optimize the campaign, right? You can see which piece of content's resonating. In this case, this asset's taking 10X the amount of impressions to yield a qualified lead than this one. Lead details, that's all the raw data. If you did ever want to look at those rejected leads, you can simply hit reject, and then you can go back through all of these reports and see and dig in, and you can even convert those rejected leads into good ones if you wanted to. And so 
That is uh, NetLine in a nutshell. And so, you know, we're here, we're all about uh, the democratization of B2B lead gen. We're all about uh, empowering B2B marketers to translate that existing content into business outcomes. And so if you'd like to learn more, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. There's a bot that uh, is on the site, obviously full of a lot of goodness dynamically. But there's a bunch of us actually behind the scenes, ready, willing, and able to engage. Uh, again, thank you for your time. Hope this was valuable. Take care.